Hello, my name is Braylon Brooks, and I'm here with Singster.tv, and I'm here with marketing manager <laughs> Miko Malvivara, and uh, he's going to let us know a little bit about um, Clothing Plus. Now, Clothing Plus is an integrator, uh, integrator of biometric sensors with clothing, so tell us a little bit about that and about the company. So the way we typically work is uh, we like to partner up with a customer. Uh, we understand what it is that they need, uh, and then together with the customer, we start up to we seek a solution to that problem. We dig into our network of uh, contacts and experts uh, that we've gathered over the 15 years that we've been around, and we source the best materials and the best technology for that project. Then we do the integration, and every single uh, development project is squarely aimed at mass production. Is Clothing Plus in any leading retailers uh, in the U.S. or in Finland? You would not find Clothing Plus at any retailer, so we don't brand our stuff. It's uh, that real estate is basically reserved for our customers. So uh, you would definitely see plenty of stuff made by us uh, in shops. Uh, I mentioned the, uh, the heart rate straps, which we manufacture uh, about 80% of the world's textile heart rate sensor straps. For pretty much, pretty much every big company out there, we do their heart rate sensor straps. Yeah, this is a unisex um, vest that we've developed so, together with Philips. So what does this vest actually help do? Like this what, is, what, what, what would be the need for this vest? Uh, this vest, uh, what it does is actually it measures fluid ac uh, uh, accumulating in the lungs uh, for a patient which has been, who has been diagnosed with uh, cardiac symptoms. Uh, so one of the uh, first indications of uh, a collapsing, weakening heart is that fluid starts to accumulate in the lungs. And uh, we can actually detect that through the bioimpedance sensors that what we have here. These are? That those are bioimpedance sensors, mm -hmm. textile sensors. We do the sensor part. Uh, somebody else does mm -hmm. the vest. It's, it's not our design. Okay. So what about this one here? Are these shorts? Oh, these are shorts. Could could I go swimming in those? Well, actually, you could. These are um, EMG measuring shorts that we do for a Finnish company called Myontech. Have you been if you today? Uh, I have not. Uh, but you can turn them inside out so you can see the sensors a little bit better. Okay. If someone, you know, if somebody's in a workout and they're sweating, couldn't this electrocute someone with all these sensors and padding and things like that? Uh, no, it couldn't. That is not a concern because the, um, the amounts of currency that are, are, well, first of all, the currency is not running through these sensors. These are just, they just detect the electronic impulses from, from your muscles. Uh, and those are, you know, through these traces, they're led back to the connector. And uh, which is in the front. This is the connector part that we don't do, and we don't do the um, the module that screws onto here. So, what was the purpose of starting this uh, clothing plus? What was the purpose? What was the motivation or the point behind all of this? Uh, well, we started out with the first wave of wearable te technology uh, roughly 10, 15 years ago. And back then, the aim was to actually build electronics into clothing so we could have really intelligent clothing with embedded electronics. That didn't really fly because of many things, but we turned the whole thing upside down. And instead of putting electronics into garments, we thought of taking textile to the electronics industry. And that paid off big time. Uh, in 2002, we started mass producing our very first uh, textile sensor uh, product, which was the Polar Wearlink. And uh, we've been at it ever since. I like the material of the clothing. It's actually very like soft, and it feels like it's very form-fitting. Like It's actually like a really good material. I like that. And it, of course, this is a woman's, of course. <laughs> so, and what is, where are the sensors located in this uh, training bra? It looks kind of more like a training bra. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's a, it's a sports bra. A sports bra. Uh, and uh, if we can just hold it to the camera, oh, yeah. it's, it's on the inside, the inside of the uh, uh, elastic trimming. So this would go beneath the breast, correct? That is right. Okay. That is right. And, and, what, and, is that, and what is that calculating? Oh, well, I'm sorry, what is that calculating? That measures your uh, heart, rate heart, rate. Vari heart rate variability, to be more exact. For it's women. For women, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it started out with women wearing a sports bra and a heart rate sensor strap, which kind of was like two things that that real estate was already taken. So uh, that's, that's what we did. We combined those two, and this is a big hit. So I know you say you're not in any leading retailer, so if people wanted to know more about uh, Clothing Plus, they could go to www.clothingplus.com? For Finland. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, look for more and more sports, fitness, and medical products with textile integrated sensors in the future, because they're going to be there big time. And I have to ask, what makes, this, what makes Clothing Plus different from all the other technologies like this? 
actually, that's a good question because uh, we don't really have much competition uh, in this field. We've been at it for 15 Did years. You hear that? <laughs> that's actually yeah. we're a bit, that's you know, good. baffled by that yeah, because, like yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, for sure we're expecting you know somebody to yeah. try to get a piece of their pie. But the thing is that we've got uh, a 15 years, uh, you know, and head start to them. And I think that's great because you guys could be the first. So um, I'm sure a lot of these things are patented, right? And, you know, so that way people won't take you guys' ideas and that way you can continue to be innovative and, you know, evolve into a bigger, better brand. Yeah, well, that's an, thanks for touching on that subject because uh, the, the way we work in, in terms of IPR is that uh, we don't really patent the stuff that we do. The innovations that we do, it's usually our customer who gets the right to patent it. That way, we save both time and resources in the legal department. We also, we don't fall in love with the stuff that we do because we don't, we don't patent it and we don't defend it in any way. That frees our resources to do even better R&D and be, uh, again, a couple of steps ahead of anybody else. Well, that just happened here at the first Wearable Tech Expo in Los Angeles with Miko Malvivara. <laughs> that just happened. Thank you. I appreciate you.